So I think there's a certain age you get to where gaming is more made up out of the powerful memories of your past than anything that you really hope to achieve in the future. Part of this is nostalgia. A part of it's also that as you get older, your ability to achieve amazing things in computer games does decrease. I was playing Counter-Strike 2 recently, and now that I'm entering my early 40s, I realize that my reflexes are not the way they were when I was 16, and that the idea of me not using grenades and managing to headshot five people in under two seconds is no longer really a viable strategy for me. So what we can achieve as gamers just decreases as we get older. It's a sad, inevitable fact of life. And for me, my most powerful and meaningful gaming achievement was just killing Tin Man Lich King. I was in a somewhat unusual guild, and by unusual I mean very mature and also unskilled. Most of the guild were either nurses, doctors, or pharmaceutical reps, and safe to say that the 40-year-old players back then also had their own reflex and reaction issues. And so for me to kill the Lich King with that guild that I was never going to leave because I'd been with them for so long, I was with them for the entire expansion, it wasn't going to happen, so I had to stick with them. And it took us, I kid you not, raiding three to four nights a week for three months to down Arthur's. Keep in mind, I am British, and although I tend to do YouTube with an American accent, this was a largely British guild, and one of the Brits in the guild was particularly not a fan of my sometimes very loud American shouting during various boss fights. And uh, so this became a bit of a guilt drama thing. But we reconciled, and we kept on month after month, week after week, trying to down Arthas. And when we finally downed Arthas, and I watched that HP drop to 10% and the cutscene start to play, the first thing I heard across the Ventrilla server was him saying, You know, I've been waiting for that loud, annoying American scream for so long. Obviously, being me, I hollered out, great balls of fire like Tom Cruise from the movie Top Gun. For me, that fight with the Lich King is the most iconic thing in communal non-single player gaming ever. The moment where your entire party is killed by Arthas and Tyrion utters that amazing line, Light, grant me one final blessing. Give me the strength to shatter these bonds. It's just still one of the most like iconic moments in gaming that I don't think will ever be replicated or replaced since. But if you watch this channel, you know that I'm probably just pretty negative on gaming. In fact, if I look at the comments on these videos, a lot of people are just like, does this guy just hate everything? It's like, no, it's just my positive videos don't get any views. Welcome to YouTube. That's kind of how it works on here most of the time, sadly, unless you've got a really good rep for doing something niche and special, which I don't, sadly. But anyways, finally on to the topic of the God, that was a long intro. Oh my God, this video is going to have terrible retention. Anyways, if you're still around after story time with old man Banjo, in this video, I want to go into uh, how classic Woe has revived. Uh, oh no, I'm going to have to say that. Okay, so I have this thing because of the dual British English accent where I sort of say, wow, as Woe, Woe, because in the bit that I grew up in in England has a very, very strange accent that even my partner didn't believe existed, where it's sort of like English Valley Girls say, as whoa, whoa. It's like um, it's like Stephen Fry on, on crack. Yeah, anyways. It's no secret that I've been a little bit down about RPGs lately, which is the focus of this channel, because other than me and my subscribers, I am more or less the only person that didn't enjoy Baldur's Gate 3, and while I had hoped to enjoy Diablo 4, even though it's more of an ARPG, I'd still hoped it would be a fun thing to cover on the channel and a game that I would enjoy playing. And I didn't enjoy either of them, despite Diablo 4 being a sort of controversial flop and Baldur's Gate 3 being a huge success. Didn't enjoy them. Just the way it is. Anyways, so I thought to myself, hmm, maybe I'll go back and I'll play some more classic games. I played some PS1 games. I played uh, some uh, traditional... Um, CRPGs, which if you want me to cover those on the channel, I can. I just think people have probably seen enough Boulder's Gate 2 for one lifetime. But then I thought to myself, hey, have you tried Classic Woe? And I thought, yeah, I have tried Classic Woe. Yes, Old Man Banjo, you did do that. And I thought, hmm. But I did some research around it. I realized there's a new server out called Turtle Woe, which is um, 
basically a classic plus server and it's adding new content to the game and I've been playing it lately and I recently I, I, I really began to to figure out what it is that I don't like about a lot of RPGs and how classic well really reflects on that and before I get into the points uh first I just want to tell a short story of like my first dungeon on there it's the first dungeon story I mean everyone has a first dungeon story on a character but I was messing around with a few people and they were like do you want to go to Rage Fire Chasm so for those of you who don't play well Rage Fire Chasm is basically the first dungeon in the game it's accessible to only horde through their city of Ogremar. it's a pretty easy dungeon if you were to play it on modern day whoa um just you know really really yeah, nothing. You would steamroll through it, like mindlessly watching a podcast in the background. But we began to do it, and we realized that our quote-unquote tank didn't even have a shield, and this was going to be quite difficult. But I was playing a warlock, and the guy that I was going through the dungeon with, he's like, hey, you're the highest level of us. You seem to be the most experienced in doing dungeons. Do you think you could just, like, kite the mobs around with your pet, and we might be able to do this? And so we managed to do that, and we, we triumphed. But I got something out of that. You know, Rage Fire Chasm, which is a, a, a dungeon I've played for, what, almost 20 years now, um, was fresh and new again because it was challenging, but it was challenging in a communal way. And that's the thing that so many of these games have lost. And so I want to go through why I think Classic WoW is such a great example of when MMORPGs were actually RPGs. And the first one that everyone talks about, if you watch the sort of videos that have these titles, you probably have heard it a million times, and that is that the open world is alive. I've been playing a lot of other private servers that are in later expansions, and one of the things that you always see happen is that pretty quickly, the instanced in-game content becomes where 90% of the players are forever and always. That's not the case in Classic. On the server that I've been playing on lately, it is so crowded in the open world at this point that... It, it really just, it doesn't just feel alive. It feels like New York City. And that's really a, a great thing that I've lost with previous expansions of World of Warcraft. But, and this goes on to my second point, the open world has to matter. There has to be some incentive to the journey through the open world other than quest at maximum efficiency, move from hub to hub to hub. And one of the things, if you played World of Warcraft, is you know that the Burning Crusade and later expansions introduced the idea of quest hubs. So there'll be a little town, you'll take some quests there, you'll do them, run back to the town, get some more quests, run back to the town. Vanilla World of Warcraft does not work that way. So I've been playing a warlock, and one of the quests I got was to make a gold blood-tinged robe. And I never completed this quest when I was uh, uh, 18, 17, whenever Vanilla came out. And there's no quest hub for this quest. It took me probably an hour in real life to sort everything out for the quest and finally get that one item. And when I got it, it felt like I'd done something meaningful in the journey of my character. That when the character gets to max level, I'll remember that time I spent an hour trying to get my gold blood-tinged robe that I used and I probably will use almost all the way up to 60 unless I get a lucky drop between now and then. It makes the journey meaningful just as the way in an RPG or D&D &D campaign, getting a really amazing drop from a boss is a meaningful aspect to your character. They're the character that wields that weapon. And even more so in classic World of Warcraft with the very famous weapons like the Ashbringer and Sulfurus. There's a meaning to the character other than just the stats and a world to be lived in. The other thing that makes classic World of Warcraft and also the Burning Crusade to an extent more of an RPG than other editions of World of Warcraft and MMOs in general, is that progression is not invalidated. So for those of you in my viewership that don't play World of Warcraft, one of the things that happened with the end of Wrath of the Lich King, the game's third expansion, is that with each patch, most if not all of your previous progression would be removed by changes in the itemization of the game. So say you buy the new expansion and then you take three months off and you return for a new patch. Well, you'll be able to gear up from that patch and enter the latest raid without having played through the successive amount of content that you missed while you were gone. This wasn't the case in Vanilla and Burning Crusade where you reasonably needed to progress through each raid in order to get geared up for the next one. Much like in a traditional RPG, 
your character needs to progress through the narrative of the storyline and the various instances in order to move on. There's no instant skips to the latest flashy content. And the third is inconvenience and annoyance. During that warlock quest for the blood robe, I went back and forth and back and forth, and then I realized I didn't have an item, and then I had to take a boat, and then I had to take a wavern, and then there, there's a lot of inconvenience in these games. But to me, the inconvenience makes me believe that I'm actually in a world. Had I completed that quest with a few single clicks, it would not have meant anything to me other than my character's stats going up. The world is there. It's a thing your character has to deal with and come to terms with, and obviously other characters have abilities that can make traversing the world quicker. And that's interesting, and that's what makes it feel real. In my view, in summary, in summary, and I'll do another video on EverQuest after this, because this, this issue has is, is been interesting to me lately. MMORPGs stopped being RPGs, and that's why people really, really hate them. That's the TLDR here. RPGs are awesome. The success of Baldur's Gate 3 has proven that. And MMORPGs suck when they stop being RPGs. And to have an RPG, you need to have a world that feels real, open, and at times inconvenient. You need to have linear progression, especially near the end game, where things have to be done by the character in order for that character's journey to progress. You can't just skip to the latest flashy content because a patch dropped. And lastly, I think the World of Warcraft team learned too much from the issues with instancing in EverQuest, which is a whole story for another time, but you need an open world that feels alive so that people can feel like their character's journey is happening in a real place, if that makes any sense. If you enjoyed this video, uh, like and subscribe. I'll be back with more. I haven't uploaded. I've been really sick lately with a virus. Uh, several people in my family have had. I'm just like wiped out and barely managing to do my audiobook narration and voiceover work, so YouTube's fallen a bit by the wayside, but I also, that hasn't stopped me from playing World of Warcraft either, so, you know, I don't, I'll see you guys around. Peace.